Hello, we've been learning a lot about machine learning models and we've been focusing on how to train them and also evaluate them. Um, for the last lecture of the semester, I want to focus on something which, which is very practical, which is, well, how do we actually use or deploy a model? How do we deploy it so we can start making predictions about the future? And so I'm going to be doing a fairly large um, programming demo for this example of optimizing a website. The website's trying to show us some ads and we want to use machine learning models to show ads that users are more likely to click on. So the website will be something like this. It's a website where you can look for grocery stores in Wisconsin. And so you're first trying to enter a Wisconsin zip code and you hit go, and then you'll jump down here. So if I say 53706, then down here I may see a listing for 53706. Maybe there'll be some grocery stores here. That's not the important part of our demo. The important part is the, well, what ad do we show? Um, where I see ads for either um, soda or coffee or wine. And when you click that, well, you'll see some sort of page with some details about it. And so what we want to do is based on prior clicks and we have the models um, help us select better ads and we're going to be basing it on zip code and before i go any further i just want to say that there's ethical issues in, involved in that right um of course if we are having different promotions uh we'd want to make sure everybody in, in every zip code has kind of equal access to those uh, uh promotions and so you have to be a little bit careful there even while you're trying to optimize and, and show people ads they're interested in you want to make sure everybody has the same opportunities um, we aren't trying to go deeper into those ethical issues right now. We're just trying to say, well, can I use this as some sort of signal to figure out, well, what is the best ad to show? Now, one of the challenges is, is that there's about 700 um, zip codes in Wisconsin, and our training data is only going to include about 1,000 users. So for most zip codes, we might only have um, one user from that zip code. And so how are we going to actually um, do anything meaningful with that? since we don't have much data per category. And the answer is that we're gonna supplement that information with data from the US Census. And so in the US Census, for example, we can get income data on a per zip code basis, right? So here's income for one zip code and then there's other zip codes along here. Um, it's kind of a complicated file, but I've already written some code that cleans it up and gives us a nice income CSV that looks like this. For each zip code, we know the, the mean income and the median income. And so what we're gonna do is rather than try to have zip code be a feature directly, whenever we see a zip code, we're gonna replace it with, well, what is the um, mean and, and median income for that area? And that can, those can be features for predicting um, and training uh, to figure out, well, what ads uh, are people interested in? Um, okay, let's talk about how the whole picture is gonna work. So here's a user and they're in their web browser and they're gonna type in their zip code and so we're gonna send that over to a Flask application that I've already read in, but we're gonna improve. And within that Flask application, we have to generate a page which lists some grocery stores and has an ad at the end. Um, you can imagine maybe we pull the uh, listing from a database. I haven't done that for right now, I just hard-coded some things as an example since it's not important. There's no actual database in my example. And initially, I'm just randomly generating these ads, right? So we're gonna send back this page with this list and this randomly generated ad. Sometimes the user will click it, sometimes they will not. In both of these cases, whenever somebody uh, requests to see a page, we wanna record that to a file. Whenever somebody clicks something, we wanna show that, record that to a file. And so that file is called a log, and it's basically all the request history. After we've been running our application for a while, um, we're gonna get some training data from that. And so in a separate Jupyter Notebook, I'm gonna read in all that data, and we're gonna use sklearn to train um, some logistic regression models. Okay, and so I'm gonna have those. And then the challenge is that this is one Python process up here and here's a separate Python process. And so I'm training my models down here, but I wanna predict them up here. And so there's no um, easy way to just move objects from one process to another, right? They're separate um, separate processes, each of which Bush has its own objects. And so what we wanna do is we wanna somehow save these uh, models, these sklearn models, um, into a file. And, um, and we've seen other formats for uh, saving other types. So for example, if I'm saving a list or a dictionary, uh, I might use JSON. If I'm saving a data frame, I might use a CSV. Um, for these very specific kinds of objects, uh, we can use these common formats. When I have something more complicated, like a more complicated object such as a, a sklearn logistic regression model, um, then the format we'll use is called pickle. So pickle can work um, in general for most um, Python objects, even classes you make yourself. 
And so we're going to pickle that. And then up here, we're going to do on pickling, which is pulling it in here. And then instead of randomly generating these ads, we're going to use it like that, right? So ultimately, by saving this to a file, I was able to move my models from one uh, Python process to another. Now, pickle also works for things like dictionaries and, and tables and things like that. So why wouldn't you always use it? And, and there's a few reasons. Um, one is that it's very much tied to the version of Python I'm using. So even if this was a separate version of Python uh, than this up here, this wouldn't necessarily uh, work. Um, or you could even imagine other cases. Maybe um, this is a Python program and this is a Java or C program or whatever. If I use a standard format like JSON or or CSV, then that's okay. I can have multiple programs of kind of different programming languages. Um, in this case, I can't. Uh, another thing with these other common formats like CSV and JSON is that I can directly read the file and it makes sense to me. This will not be very readable um, by a human. Okay, so we're kind of going through this whole cycle, right? We get data, we get a model, and we come back in and we start making predictions based on it. And I could have many different users that are doing this, and over time, uh, I, I would try to collect more and more data. Now, when I'm doing this example, I don't want to be manually clicking on the website thousands of times. So I've written a little bit of uh, a little user um, simulator. I'll be uh, simulating thousands of users that are typing different zip codes and sometimes clicking and sometimes not. Um, this tool is based on the request module for sending uh, requests, and uh, it's not an important part of this example. It's just something, something that I've done in advance that you should be aware of. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to my website. And here I am on my virtual machine. And, um, and you can see I have a few files here. Uh, Grocery.py is the Flask application we're gonna be working in. Um, Income.csv tells us the income for each zip code. And then let me just delete this here for a moment. That was from before. And then I'm using these other files down here to basically simulate users. So these are not an important part of what we're looking at. So let me take a look at this grocery.py. And uh, I see at, top, at the top I have a dictionary of um, ads, right? So I have different ad names and then well, what shows up for that ad, right? Then I have my Flask application and I have three routes. Um, I have a home page which shows that zip code um, box that we type it in and it has like a button that you click to, to say go. I'm not trying to look at this closely because this contains some JavaScript code here, and we don't know JavaScript, so don't worry about it. Just know that it's letting the people type that in, and then it navigates the page. Where we'll start worrying a little bit more is this listing.html page. Uh, when somebody comes to this page, we have to show them the grocery stores, which for now I've just hard-coded since it's not a main part of what we're doing. And we have to randomly select an ad. So remember I have that dictionary of ads up above. I'm randomly choosing one and that's the ad name, and then I'm pulling out the text, and then I'm putting that text down here in the bottom, right? So I'm, I'm kind of just formatting that. I'm injecting this ad text in the middle right here, and that's how I can generate different pages. Um, in general, that ad text will contain a hyperlink, and if they click it, they're gonna end up on this third route down here, uh, where I'll show them some information about the product. So I'm gonna head over here, and I'm just trying to run it for a moment. I'm gonna say grocery.py, and uh, and it's running, this means it's public, this means I'm port 5000, and so I can copy this right here, and I can say I want port 5000, and there it is, and I can say whatever, and I go, and then I see the grocery stores for there, and if I click this multiple times, I might see different ads, I click an ad, and then I can see some details about that product. Okay, and so right now, uh, you can see that there's these requests here, but it's not necessarily clear what ad is being Shown. So I want to add some prints to make that a little bit more clear. Okay, so I'm going to head back here. And, um, and what I want to do is I want to record whenever somebody sees an ad. And I want to record uh, also, I want to record when they actually clicked an ad down here. And so I'm going to record this information in something called a log file. And so maybe up here I'm just going to say uh, log file equals open. You know how, how we've been doing this lately. We've been doing things like this. We'll say like with open, um, with open, maybe I'll call it, um, this is my training data. And, and then I might do some writes to it. I might say like log file dot write, you know, whatever there. Um, this is not going to work for me because I want this file to be open for my whole program for, for a long time, even though I'm trying to call any different functions. So instead of using this style, which I normally prefer, I'm going to do... Um, this style. I'm going to say the log file object 
equals the open of that, and then I can write to it in different places as I like. When I have that open, and it's gonna be open forever, and then down here, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say log file dot write, and, um, and then down here, I'm just gonna make this a format string so I can have some different pieces. Uh, I wanna make a note that somebody clicked something, or I'm sorry, that they were shown something, they were shown an ad, and then remember I have to put a new line at the end of each, um, whenever I'm writing something to a file. And then down here, I wanna make a note that they uh, clicked an ad. All right, so I'm gonna do that. And then what I wanna do is I also wanna show some information about them. I wanna know uh, who they are, right? So I'm gonna use this user ID variable. I want to know where they're from. And finally, I wanna know, well, what ad were they shown? All right, so I'm gonna show, do all that down here. That's the main information I have. Uh, now, I wanna um, connect these shows with the clicks later. So when I'm down here, I should again make a record of the user ID. I already know what um, ad they were shown, so I don't need to record that again. Down here, I just need this to connect the clicks back with what was shown earlier. Okay, um, I'm gonna save this. One last thing I need to do. Remember that um, when I open a file, uh, I when I will later close it, it kind of flushes all the data out to the file. Otherwise, the data might be temporarily sitting in memory. Where am I gonna close my file? That is a very challenging question because this program is a web server and it runs forever, right? And I don't wanna close it until my program finishes running. Well, my program finishes running because somebody just kills it. And so I wanna have some way to make sure that when I write data, for example, here, you know, here I'm writing some data. I wanna have some way to make sure that this actually ends up in the file. It doesn't sit in memory, even though I haven't closed the file yet. And so prior to close, there's another call we can do, which is flush. And flush means um, set, means basically like any written uh, data in Python's memory should go out, basically. It should end up in the actual file. And uh, so I'm gonna have to do that here. And, uh, and really, I'm just trying to do that whenever I write that file. So I'm gonna do that down here as well. And I'm gonna save this. And, uh, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna run it again. You know, you know what, I think I'm running into a problem here. There's no train.txt because I did not open it for writing. I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna run this. And, uh, and then let me head back to my main home page here. So I'm maybe back here. I'm gonna go to that and then you gonna click the zesty one. Okay, I'm gonna be coming over here and I'm gonna hit control C. I'm gonna say LS and I can see there's this train.txt. Let's see what's inside of that. I'm gonna say train.txt. And I can see, well, here are my records. I have my show records and then my click records. Okay, so that's good. Let's actually try to get some more serious data. So I'm gonna be running my, um, uh, my program again, pythongrocery.py. And then over here, let me open up a new terminal. I'm gonna SSH in. And uh, let me go to where my directory is. I'm gonna run this simulate users program now. And so I'm gonna say Python 3, simulate users. And basically I have different user information in these two things. That's not an important detail, but I could say, well, I'm gonna get the first batch of users right here. And so when I do this, it's gonna be the, basically the same as me coming to this website and clicking a bunch of things, but it's gonna happen really fast for um, basically a thousand different fake users. So I'm gonna run that and uh, and you can see it's hitting all these web requests and that'll take a moment. And, uh, and as part of the simulation, the users clicked 19.2% of the ads. And that's gonna be our goal. Can we get better than 19.2% of the ads clicked? All right, so I'm gonna head over here now. I'm gonna hit Control C. And so I saw my train.txt, but now if I look inside of it, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff there. So I have all of these different uh, kind of activities going on, right? These different, um, these different, uh, uh, I guess different users were shown things and then different users clicked things. Okay, so I'm gonna head over here now and I'm gonna create a new notebook where I can actually start using this data. So I'm gonna say new Python 3.
Um, and excuse me, now I know my battery is not trying to die in the middle of the demo. Anyway, so here I am, um, and I want to read in that file I was just talking about. So I'm going to say uh, with open train.txt as f. That was the thing that was just generated by, um, by my grocery.py. Maybe I'll just loop over it. I'll say for line in f. Let me just print each line because I have all these pieces. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split it into parts. I'm going to say parts equals line dot split. And maybe I'll print my parts for of each line. And then what I can do is I can say based on that first piece, what am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a record that says a show? So somebody was shown an ad or they actually clicked an ad. And, and so I can say something like this. I can say, um, maybe I'll first just deal with the shows. I'll say if parts of zero equals show, well, what I want to do is I want to get these three things as a row and a data frame. So I want to get this in a data frame, this in a data frame, this in a data frame, so on and so forth. And so I'm going to get some rows for my data frame like this. And whenever I see this, I want to say rows.append parts of one bracket. And I think I actually need to have that be plural up there. And, and so I'm going to run this. And I guess I'm still having all my prints. Let me clean that up a little bit. And so then I have my rows down here, and I can say import pandas as pd. Maybe I should actually do this up here. Um, it's generally good to have all the imports at the top. And then I can say pd.dataframe, dot data frame, and I want all of those rows, just like that. I have this nice thing. And, and then I need the column names, right? So I need to have some columns here. And uh, basically the based on the order I was um, printing these things, I know that this is user ID, this is zip code, and then this was the ad, right? So I'm gonna say user ID, a zip code, and ad. So I have all of that, which is great. What I wanna have now is another column that tells me whether or not they clicked on it, right? So that's trying to be that other piece up here. So I'm gonna say elif parts of one equals click. Maybe let me just print off those parts for now so I can see what's going on there. Um, and I wonder why that, oh, parts of zero, excuse me. Right, so I know that these are all the users that clicked. So user two clicked, user six clicked, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna call this user clicks. I'm gonna create a, a, a list of all of these. And whenever I see one of these, I want to say user clicks dot append parts of one. Right? I'll do that instead of printing. So I'm all done here. And so afterwards I have these user clicks. And what I want to do is I want to basically get a, a Boolean in my other data frame that will tell me whether or not somebody clicked on it. Right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say this is my um, data frame, or maybe I'll call it uh, my yeah, I'll just call it data frame for now. And what I can do is I can say data frame of user ID dot is n, right? So user ID means I'm looking at this column right here. Which of those are in this user's click list that I created? And I get this um, basically a series of Booleans. And I can add that directly back into my data frame. So I'm gonna say click like this, and then I get this, and I can see, well, um, I can see, okay, well, here's a bunch of different users, you know, user two, from this zip code saw an ad about coffee, and they clicked it, and, and so that's great. So I'm all kind of set up there. Now, um, before I can move on to training data, or, or kind of have data that I could use to train my models, what I may have to do is um, add in some information, right? Zip code is not a very good feature, as I talked about earlier, what I really want to know is um, a guess of what this user's median um, income is, right? Or what their income is, because then I can maybe say, well, you know, that wine was super expensive, and, and so maybe users with high income might pick wine. I don't know, maybe the model will tell us that, maybe not. So how can I get that information? Well, I have this other file called income.csv, just like that. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the zip as the index. I'm going to say dot set index 
of zip, just like that. And I'll call this n columns dot head. Okay. And so one of the ways that I can do um, indexing on these things, I could say n columns, and um, and we've seen before I can have like a, a list of columns here. Um, another thing I could do is I could say dot uh, dot location, and then what I would have is I would have a list of um, uh, IDX values, right? So for example, I could say I want five three all oh, one. And maybe I'll just grab two of those to show that it can repeat, or a few of them. Maybe I'll get one of this, and maybe I'll get this last one here. And so I can do that. And um, actually, I think maybe my problem is, let me just check what type that is. I'm going to say intrums dot index. What type is that thing? That is an integer. Okay. So I should put this as an integer, right? Just like that. And then hopefully it'll work. Whenever I get a type error, but the key looks like it's something that's actually there. Or I'm sorry, whenever I get a key error and it really looks like the key is there, but it's not finding it, it's usually a type error. So you can see what happened there. So I had three of these. So basically I repeated this row three times down here. And then I got one of uh, this row in next, right? That showed up right down here. And then I, after that, I had a 5305. So why do I want to do that kind of indexing? Well, for each of these users up here, I have this zip code. And so I can use each of these to pull out a corresponding row down here, right? So instead of putting this list hard-coded here, I am going to say I want my DF of zip code. And then I probably need to make that an integer like before as well. Okay, so I have these. So how, let me just try to see how this is working. So here, I guess the first sub code was 54750, and then 54812, and then 54750, 54812. And so what I'm seeing is that I have this new thing here. I produce this data frame, which can basically be lined up with my data about user clicks, right? To actually see what's going on. And, uh, and so that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to try to somehow glue those things together. Now to glue them together, I have to make sure that these indexes are the same. So this is just kind of simply numbered zero, one, two, three, four. Down here, uh, I, I have it, um, the actual zip codes here. So I'm gonna say dot reset index, just to avoid any trouble. And when I do that, it tries to pop the zip back over here, which I don't want. So I'm going to say drop equals true. And now I actually have something that's very nicely aligned with what I have earlier, right? So I'm going to call this my features like that. And so what I want to do now is I want to glue these two data frames together. I want to uh, glue this one, which um, basically came from my web application together with this one to the right. So let me just I'm going to say head here so it's not too long. And so I can do this pd.concat. And, and so inside of here, I will have data frames. And then I have to say axis equals, um, I could do vertical, one on top of the other, that would be zero, right? Or I could have it horizontal, which is what I actually want. In that case, it's one. So here's my tuple of data frames. And so what are those? Those are called df and features. And so I can do that. And now I can see that originally I just had these things, right? And kind of with all this fancy pandas work, I could say for each of these zip codes, well, uh, what was the um, what was the income mean and income median for that zip code? And so now I actually have a data set that's pretty nice for training because for a particular ad, um, I know who was clicked, and then I know the uh, kind of the income level for the area that this user uh, uh, is visiting the site from. And so I'm gonna save this in a training data set like this. And in the next video, I'm actually gonna be training some models based on that.